Are you ready to witness history in the making? Join us as we take an exclusive look at the construction of the Vogel Electric Generating Plant Units 3 and 4, the largest nuclear power project in the United States. From record-breaking federal loan guarantees to the installation of the final steam generator, we'll be diving deep into the project's progress and uncovering the challenges along the way. Buckle up and get ready for an exciting journey into the future of America's energy sector. The Vogel Electric Generating Plant, also known as Plant Vogel, is a four-unit nuclear power plant located in Burke County near Waynesboro, Georgia. Named after a former Alabama Power and Southern Company board chairman, Alvin Vogel, this plant is a Westinghouse pressurized water reactor, PWR, with a general electric steam turbine and electric generator. Guess how many megawatt hours of clean energy each year do you think Vogel Unit 3 and 4 will generate? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification for more exciting content. Now, back to our largest nuclear power project, Vogel Unit 3 and 4. In 2006, Southern Nuclear applied for an early site permit, ESP, for two additional units. Then in 2008, Southern Nuclear took things up a notch by applying for a combined construction and operating license. This was a significant step towards realizing the company's vision of building two new reactors. But it wasn't until April 9, 2008, that Georgia Power Company made a contract agreement for two AP-1000 reactors designed by Western house owned by Toshiba. To manage the project, Westinghouse partnered with the Shaw Group and its Stone and Webster division. Westinghouse was responsible for engineering, design, and overall management, while Shaw took charge of manufacturing the prefabricated component modules and managing on-site construction. This partnership was a game-changer for the project and marked the first agreement for new nuclear development in the United States since the Three Mile Island accident in 1979. The contract was approved by the Georgia Public Service Commission on March 17, 2009, setting the stage for what would become a landmark development in the energy sector. The expansion project has since faced numerous challenges and delays, but it's on track to become one of the most advanced nuclear power plants in the world. The project began in earnest on August 26, 2009, when the Nuclear Regulatory Commission NRC, granted an early site permit and a limited work authorization. Construction of the new reactor sites was soon underway, with Unit 3 initially scheduled to go online in 2016, followed by Unit 4 in 2017, pending final approval of the combined construction and operating license by the NRC. However, the path to completion has not been without its challenges. In December 2011, a 19th revision of the AP-1000 design certification was issued, which included a significant redesign of the containment building. This new design includes a reinforced and appropriately sized wall module that joins the reinforced concrete sections and can withstand seismic loads and aircraft loads. This design was not included in previous amendments where the entire structure was made of reinforced concrete. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, the operational dates have since slipped to 2022 and 2023 for Units 3 and 4, respectively. The delay was caused by a change to the design requirements, which was made after engineering contracts were already signed, and manufacturing had begun on the reactor's long lead time components. As a result, construction had to be halted as the containment building had to be redesigned. This was a setback for the project, but it's a necessary step step to ensure the safety of the public and the workers. Meanwhile, on February 16, 2010, former President Barack Obama announced $8.33 billion in federal loan guarantees towards the construction cost of the reactors. However, as of December 2013, Georgia Power had not availed itself of those guarantees, at first awaiting the construction license and after the construction stop lawsuit outcome. The expected building cost for the two reactors was $14 billion, and Georgia Power's share was around $6.1 billion. The remaining ownership of the two reactors is split among Oglethorpe Power Corporation, the Municipal Electric Authority of Georgia, Meek Power, and Dalton Utilities. 
In February 2012, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, gave the green light for the construction of two AP-1000 reactors at the Vogel site. However, NRC Chairman Gregory Yashko was the lone dissenting voice, citing safety concerns stemming from the Fukushima disaster in Japan. Despite the opposition from environmental and anti-nuclear groups, Southern Company, the plant's owner, received the license to begin construction. The lawsuit was eventually rejected by the Washington, D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Construction began in March 2013 with the pouring of the basement concrete for Unit 3's nuclear island. Two days later, the operation was completed. The assembly of the containment vessel started in June 2013, and by November 21, 2013, the basement pour for Unit 4 was also completed. Despite the progress, the construction schedule had been extended by at least 14 months. Meanwhile, the project faced more challenges when the construction contractor, Shaw, was purchased by Chicago Bridge and Iron Company, CB&I, in February 2013. However, this did not deter the team from forging ahead. They continued to work tirelessly, even amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, to complete the reactors. Back in February of 2014, the Department of Energy approved a whopping $6.5 billion loan guarantee for Southern Company subsidiary Georgia Power and Oglethorpe Power Corporation. That's a lot of money, even for a project of this size. Originally, the Department of Energy demanded a credit subsidy fee, but that demand was ultimately dropped due to the financial strength of Southern Company and the Vogel project. Unfortunately, the project experienced some delays and cost increases, and in early 2015, contractor CB&I decided to exit the project. But never fear, because Westinghouse stepped in to take direct control of the project as the new contractor. They even hired construction firm Fleur to replace CB&I Shaw on site and manage the day-to-day -day work. To ensure the project could move forward, Westinghouse also purchased certain assets of the former Shaw Group from CB&I. By 2016, Southern Company and Westinghouse added construction firm Bechtel to the project to share construction management responsibilities. Despite these setbacks, progress continued to be made on the project. Some significant milestones were achieved. For instance, the final two of the big six structural modules were installed in Unit 4. Meanwhile, in Unit 3, the final reactor coolant pump was received on site in June 2016. And in November of that same year, the reactor vessel was set within the nuclear island. In 2017, the installation of the reactor coolant loop piping and both both steam generators at Unit 3 were completed, along with progress in the turbine, auxiliary, and annex building. Both cooling towers were also completed, standing nearly 600 feet, 180 meters tall. But perhaps the most impressive milestone of all was the setting of the final two Big Six structural modules for Unit 3. These modules, known as CA2 and CA3, form the walls of a storage tank that is part of the reactor's passive cooling system. The Big Six modules also include the previously installed CA1, CA4, and CA5 in containment structural modules, as well as the previously installed CA20 structural module which forms part of the internal structure of the auxiliary building containing many of the reactor's support systems. These modules were placed within the containment vessel in May 2016, and their installation allowed other construction activities to commence. However, the Georgia Public Service Commission, GPSC, raised concerns in November 2017 that the design blueprints for Units 3 and 4 had not been approved by appropriately licensed engineers, which could have legal implications. As a result, the Commission requested additional documentation, which caused delays in the project timeline. However, in December 2017, the PSC approved the continuation of construction on Units 3 and 4, but with conditions that reduced the cost that can be recovered from ratepayers over the life of the project. This caused a scheduled monthly consumer rate increase of $3.78. 
after the first power. Despite these setbacks, the Vogel Electric Generating Plant has made significant progress in recent years. In the February 2018 Vogel Construction Monitoring Report, VCM, the GPSC approved November 2021 and November 2022 as the target in-service dates for Units 3 and 4, respectively. The report also notes that the project is being completed on an accelerated schedule and is currently tracking ahead of the 2021 and 2022. 22 in-service target dates. Unfortunately, the project faced another challenge when a $2.3 billion increase in costs was recognized in August 2018, bringing the total cost, including financing costs, to about $25 billion. However, Georgia Power, the main partner in the project, agreed to pay an additional proportion of the costs of the smaller project partners if the cost of completion went beyond $9.2 billion, which helped sustain the project. Back in March 2019, the federal government granted further loan guarantees totaling $3.7 billion to the various build partners, bringing the total federal loan guarantees up to a whopping $12 billion. These loan guarantees played a crucial role in reducing financing costs for the project. Fast forward to the present day and we have some exciting news to share. Georgia Power has confirmed that the Unit 3 containment cap has been lowered into place and the reactor is on track to be loaded with nuclear fuel in 2022. This is a significant milestone that was preceded by the installations of the containment vessel's third ring, reactor coolant pump, and polar crane back in 2018 and 2019. The containment vessel's top head was set during a site visit by Secretary of Energy Rick Perry and executives of the plant's owners. But that's not all. Unit 4 is also making progress with the final steam generator and pressurizer now installed. Lessons learned from the failed Virgil C. Summer Nuclear Generating Station project and the experience gained from constructing Unit 3 have helped to modify the order in which some components are being installed in Unit 4. On November 22, 2019, the third ring of the containment vessel was set for Unit 4, and on December 8, 2019, the shield building roof was set above the Unit 3 containment vessel. Meanwhile, the control room of Unit 3 became operational on December 16th, 2019, and is now available for testing systems. As of February 2020, assembly continues on the final topmost vertical feature of the overall Unit 3 reactor building, the passive containment cooling system storage tank, which will be set on top of the shield building roof. However, it hasn't been all smooth sailing for the Vogel Electric Generating Plant. A three-month delay was announced in October 2021, pushing the expected operational date to the third quarter of 2022 for Unit 3 and the second quarter of 2023 for Unit 4. Unfortunately, in August 2022, another delay was announced, pushing the expected completion date for Unit 3 to the first quarter of 2023 and Unit 4 to the fourth quarter of 2023. This delay is expected to cause the project's cost to rise to over $30 billion. On October 4th, 2022, it was announced that Vogel Unit 3 had officially begun loading nuclear fuel, marking a significant milestone in the plant's construction. This process involves technicians from Southern Nuclear and Westinghouse working together to transfer 157 fuel assemblies from the fuel pool to the reactor one at a time. Once this process is completed, the startup testing phase begins. During startup testing, the primary coolant system and steam systems are verified for integrity and their functionality at design temperatures and pressures is ensured. Operators also bring the units from a cold start to the first criticality, where a sustained chain reaction is achieved. The unit is then synchronized to the electric grid and the power is systematically raised to 100%. Vogel Unit 3 was initially projected to enter service in the first quarter of 2023. However, during startup and pre-operational testing in February 2023, the plant's cooling system experienced unexpected vibrations. Measures were taken to remedy the problem and additional minor issues are also under investigation. As a result, the time plan has been set back and the unit is now expected to begin regular service in May or June of 2023. Meanwhile, on March 6, 2023, Vogel Unit 3 achieved initial criticality for the first time and the unit was connected to the grid 
on April 1st. This was a significant achievement in the construction of the plant and a clear indication that the project is on track. But that's not all. On May 2nd, 2023, Georgia Power announced that Vogel Unit 4 had completed hot functional testing, confirming that the reactor is ready for its first fuel load. This marks another critical milestone in the construction of the plant and puts Vogel Electric Generating Plant one step closer to full operation. Once fully operational, Vogel Units 3 and 4 are set to generate a whopping 17 million megawatt hours of clean energy each year. That's enough to power hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses with sustainable, emissions-free electricity. But the benefits don't stop there. By producing this incredible amount of clean energy, Vogel Units 3 and 4 will prevent a massive 10 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. That's like taking millions of cars off the road and making a significant dent in the fight against climate change. The plant will provide safe, reliable, and emissions-free power to the state of Georgia for decades to come. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.